The Phenomena of Insta Poetry Since the dawn of the age of technology and social media, communication has been evolving to accommodate new platforms. Since the early 90s, ideas have been tried and failed to move the population to an online-based friends network. Yet, it wasn't until 2003 when the modern-day social platforms really started to develop. MySpace was first in 2003, followed soon by Facebook in 2004, Twitter in 2005, and Instagram later in 2010. Today, there are 2.77 billion people using any or all social media platforms. That's 70% of the population. They have more than one. While 750 million of that 2.77 billion are in China alone, and another 400 million are in India alone, the area with the highest level of penetration is, you got it, North America. In 2017, 89% of the American population had a social media account, at least one. That means approximately 9 out of 10 people you know have some sort of social media. Think about that for a second. This all means that a huge portion of the population is exposed to what we see on the internet. I am going to take Instagram in particular. Instagram has become a huge platform for creativity, both visual and written. The rise of Instagram has evolved the written language, and particularly poetry, until now, where the current genre is defined as Instapoetry. There are hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of poetry accounts on Instagram as showcased by accounts such as Poets. This is an account that shares poems from countless authors to their 1.5 million followers. But for the sake of scope, we are going to take three big ones, for example. Rupi Kaur rose to fame with her release of Milk and Honey, the first poetry book to rise to the top of the charts in decades with a whopping 3.6 million Instagram followers. Atticus, also a New York Times bestselling author, has a smaller amount of only 1.1 million followers. Last but not least, our own local Tyler Knott Gregson. He's a Helena native and a Montana resident, but he only has 359,000 followers. Let's start with Rupi Kaur. Rupi Kaur hit the Instagram scene in 2014 when she started publishing poems with illustrations. Since, she has reached absolute celebrity status. It has been said that her poems are simple and lacking critical acclaim. Critics claim that this is because of her accessibility and the honesty in which she is known for. Rupi argues back that her poetry is not meant for literary critics, but for everyday people. She was quoted saying, This is for that, like, 17-year-old brown woman in Brampton who is not even thinking about that space, who is just trying to live, survive, get through her day. By saying this, Cower automatically nullifies any form of criticism because, if criticized, it would be inapplicable because the reader does not simply understand the content. As Rupi puts it, it must not have been for them. Some critics contest the speed in which poems are produced by Instapoets. Because these poems are less about the verbal content and more about the presentation and the digital media, they are sometimes considered poor in comparison with traditional poems. Cower is again quoted saying, My poetry appeals to people because it is, like, accessible. It is free. It is my gift to everyone. This brings into question, when did we shift our sights from quality to quantity. Poets have been quoted saying they write up to 11 poems in a sitting. Critics have delved into the literary quality of this high number of poems, saying things like, from the language used to the short, punchy lines and lack of punctuation, the free verse form creates an opportunity to absolutely reject literary establishment and to bring poetry closer to popular culture. I think this is really important. But I do wonder, what has this done for our modern day rhetoric? With the fast-paced lives we are all living, we have lost patience as we watch the loading circle waste our time. Please wait while this next slide loads. Instead of putting time into the great, legendary, life-changing collections of words, we create one-liners. This brings me to our next author, Atticus. He is known for being a romantic and rose to fame with his famous poem and later book title, Love Her but leave her wild. You got it. That's it. 
It has since become an iconic phrase, with people everywhere sporting necklaces, rings, bracelets, tattoos, and decorating their walls with the simple words. It makes one question. When did the rhetorical motivation move from creating written and verbal art to a monetary gain? Instapoets are certainly not a member of the starving artist community, as seen by this graphic, where you can see an annual salary is directly related to the number of followers one has. We are starting to see this quality be lost. Are we more focused on quantity now? Atticus, like Cower, has released books with poems of simple language. Critics are quoted again saying, compilation of inspirational quotes does not qualify as a good poem, clearly disregarding the content and the accessibility of these poems. The theme with all these authors is simple language, beautiful presentation. You can't help but wonder, are people being drawn to the poetry because of the aesthetic appeal? Poems on these Instapoets accounts are often presented handwritten on papyrus. They are the backdrop to photos. They are typewritten. The visual appeal of the poet's Instagram accounts as a whole, too, are simply beautiful. Tyler Dot Gregson balances a nice line of handwritten poems, a nice line of photos, and then a nice line of typewritten poems. While Rupi alternates photo poem, photo poem, while throwing in the occasional plug for her book tour. Overall, the visual appeal is there. The only thing that still bothers me is the content. Let's look at some examples. Reality is the worst part of my day. Atticus. You can imitate a light like mine, but you cannot become it. Ruby Cower. Take yourself in when you have no one. Eloise Knight. She wasn't waiting for a knight. She was waiting for a sword. Atticus. Let it go. Let it leave. Let it happen. Nothing in this world was promised or belonged to you anyway. All this time, I believe, with all I am, I would find you. Where are the, some of the themes we are seeing here? Simple, short, layperson language. Stand is built to stop you in your phrasing. Images to catch your attention. Fonts to create an authentic feel or to create a clean environment. How do these images, words, and poems make you feel? Are they doing their job? Are they appealing to the masses? They are certainly doing their job for some. Insta poetry books account for 60% of the top-selling poetry books in the world. That includes the greats. Additionally, some 28 million Americans are reading poetry, the highest percentage in the last two decades. This influx and rise of Insta poetry has influenced all of us. In fact, I have two books sitting here on my coffee table, which I poke through occasionally, and, to be honest, when I married two of my best friends last fall, they requested a few poems from these books. The romantic feel really hits home. Short and concise lines make it easy to digest. They make sense. So, I guess that means instant poetry has succeeded. Next time you are scrolling, just think about how much or little work goes into what you are seeing. Thank you.